Hi folks, this is version 4 of my attempt to generate electricity with my Fresnel lens by using it to heat up the air in a mini solar tower. Just like versions 1, 2, and 3, this one didn't work either. However, I did get a much, much hotter temperature, so much so that the insulation inside my solar tower started melting. Here's a quick overview of a solar tower in case you haven't watched the video for versions 1 through 3. Basically the concentrated sunlight from the Fresnel lens is converted to heat at the dark colored absorber inside the tower. This heats up the air, which then rises. As the air leaves the top of the tower, it turns the generator, which produces electricity. That's the plan, anyway. Here's a quick run-through of the construction. And here's what I have now, my solar tower, more like a solar chamber. And I've basically got some extruded uh, polystyrene here, which is just what I had on hand. I cut a bunch of pieces all right, with some grooves and so on. And this is uh, just some glass, which I had on hand and I cut it to size, uh, two pieces about an eighth inch thick, put some carpet tape in between just to make double pane glazing. Okay, a few other things I did here, I uh, lined the inside here, I put it all together and then I lined the inside with aluminum tape and uh, made these two pieces uh, from aluminum flashing and these are going to be the absorber and I just painted, um, sorry, just painted them with um, this barbecue and stove paint right here, one side. Okay, so here it is put together. Just added a little bit of um, extra polystyrene there. In the comments to uh, my first video for versions uh, 1 through 3 of the solar tower, uh, some um, user uh, Archery Man 5000 mentioned that it might be a good idea to uh, make a longer channel for the air to go up. That way you have a more a larger volume of hot air rising which would uh, create more buoyancy and in, in other words um, uh, more force up here. Um, so I uh, made this little plastic tube which I'll also test with. Um, basically stick it in there, stick that there, this little uh, piece right here and there you go. So that extends the, uh, the channel um, but keeps it well insulated all the way up. Okay, so I adapted the reflectors from versions um, uh, 1, 2, and 3 for this version 4 one. And uh, it goes on right like this. You can see the bottom has a plate for attaching. And uh, the critical thing here is that these angles right here must be no steeper than 22 degrees, otherwise they're going to start blocking light. But I want them to be fairly close to that so that they'll reflect the light into the absorber and not across to another reflector and out. And the side ones here should be um, no, great, no steeper than 41 degrees, otherwise they'll block light coming from the Fresnel lens. Uh, but again, I want them steep, otherwise if they're not too steep, they would just reflect light from here to here and back out again. In this case, it will reflect light into the absorber. And there's the completed version 4. And up. <laughs> And here's the Fresnel lens and the test setup. Here I'm testing the short version without the long channel added on. The air at the bottom opening feels cool and the air at the top feels hot. Here I am trying it out with the longer channel added on. Again the air at the bottom feels cool and the air at the top feels hot. Note the bit of tissue paper overlapping the opening and the fact that it doesn't move. If I blow on it gently, it does move though. Here's the cooking thermometer stuck down the channel and halfway into the heating chamber. Notice how fast the temperature is rising. I stopped it at 175 degrees Celsius, which is around 330 Fahrenheit, even though it was still rising because of the smoke. Uh, obviously the interior insulation was melting. And here's what it looks like after the fact. Now this piece right here is originally flat like this. <laughs> So the, the uh, whole chamber here with the absorber actually melted out and dropped down into the lower piece. So this was all flat before. It got quite hot in there. Uh, this piece right here also experienced quite a bit of melting. And even the, um, the extended channel, uh, there's some melting on the plastic right here as well. So this one definitely, definitely successfully produced more heat. So my plan for the next version, I guess version, what are you up to, 5 now, um, would be uh, to have a metal channel, a metal tube, the whole length. 
uh, and higher temperature insulation, something that can handle it. I didn't want to do metal tube the whole length originally because metal conducts heat and I don't want the metal to conduct the heat away. I want all the heat to go into the air. But looks like I'm going to have to do that. Oh, one other thing I want to point out uh, in the earlier video uh, you saw that there was, was wider opening right here. Before doing the tests I pushed these two reflectors in more so that the reflectors were pointing only at the glass and uh, not and the, and the uh, absorbers. Well thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. I'll put an annotation here and notes in the description below when the next version of this mini solar tower is ready. If you don't have access to either of those, then you can look in my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org. If you missed the video about versions 1 through 3 of this mini solar tower, be sure and check it out. And videos about using this Fresnel lens to do solar cooking can be found in the Renewable Energy playlist on my channel. Enjoy!